Cedar Rapids number one for New Country, 98.1 K-Hawk. It's Brain in Cortland, and we are so excited to have on the phone with us the winner of Survivor Philippines and the winner in our heart of Survivor's <laughs> Winners at War, Denise Stapley. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, you guys. Thank you. Denise, we were huge fans of yours this entire season. We were so excited to see that you made it to the top six and we were we were bummed that you didn't make it any further, but we felt like people didn't want to vote you out. Yeah. You know, you were voted off, but nobody really wanted to see you go. I agree. You know, I think if, if there is any way to have to go out of the game and even seeing it the second time through, I'm like, oh, it's not like they turned on me. They kind of had no choice. Yeah. You know, and so it, it's like, you know, yeah, there was no choice. So it definitely was a better way to go out than feeling like, oh, my gosh, my alliance just completely turned on me. So they did what they needed to do. And, you know, they're, they are all just amazing human beings. So there are definitely no hard feelings with that. Denise, it's, it's crazy to talk to you after watching you and, and all the other castmates on CBS for so many weeks. We kind of get to feel like we almost know you in a way just from your interactions and your alliances and the things that happen. Um, but what is life like when you go back from Survivor? You've spent all those days in Fiji. What is it like when you get back to Marion, Iowa? Oh, wow. That is tough. It's it's different this time. Coming back from this season, you know, I, this was such a hard season. And I think you could see it on our faces out there. You could see the wear and tear. You could see, like, I literally felt like I age, you know, every tribal council, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, 48, but I feel like I'm 82. See, and, but you don't you know, look, you look like you could kick both of our butts. Yeah, I mean, no, you I are, was going to say, tell Denise what you said right before we went on, we went on with I her. I said she could kill she both of us. She looks like she could kill both of us, so there you go. What do you do to I, I prepare? I mean, I think I, I definitely don't look, you know, like I, I'm in pretty decent shape, but it's just, it's the emotional wear and tear, I think is the worst thing. Mm -hmm. And so coming home, you know, I hadn't lost that. So it wasn't, it's not the physical recovery that's hard, but coming home, you know, I was just tapped out when I came back home here. And so this time around, I gave myself about a week to just kind of hang at home and get back, you know, to normal life, spend time with my husband and my daughter. And, you know, that's, that was exactly what I needed. But, you know, because nobody, you know, you can't tell anybody where you've gone. So it's not like you can come home and, and process it with anybody. So, I literally just kind of had to process it a little bit at home with my family and kind of get back into normal life. But but I was definitely tapped out and ready to be home. So what was I would like, never look so good. What was like the little comfort that you were looking forward to the most when you finally got home? Was it sleeping in a regular bed? Was it showering in, a, in your nice hot shower? I mean, what what part was the best well, for you? I will be totally honest. So it, it wasn't the bed because I literally slept on the floor in the airport on the way home. <laughs> because our flight got canceled, oh, no. and so I slept on the floor in the Denver airport by choice. Oh my they gosh! They offered a hotel room. I'm like, no, this will be fun. It'll just be a little adventure. So <laughs> to bed, I'm okay with. I I rolled with it. But you know what I wanted when I got home, and it was the comfort thing. And luckily, I have a family who just rolls with it. I just said they ended up having to pick me up in Moline. And I said, I just want Hooters wings. That's all I want. I want Hooters wings <laughs> and some beer. And so we went and got oh Hooters before we came home. Of all things, that's what I wanted. That I wanted is so them. random. And, <laughs> and it is, like, totally random, right? Like, to Well, it was like after I got out of the game, my random meal that I got at Ponderosa was eggs, bacon, and French fries. Like, oh, wow. totally random. Like, a weird combo. That sounds like something so, I would order, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just weird. So, it is it is the little things, though. It's like that, like the normalcy, like just those things that it's just great once you're out of the game. We're talking with Denise Stapley, of course, a huge part of Survivor Winners at War that just concluded last week on CBS. There were so many big moments that you had on the show, Denise, but, of course, the one that, that you garnered a nickname for, of course, is Queen, Queen Slayer. Yes. When did you realize that you had the power to take out whoever you wanted to take out, and why did you decide on Sandra? I know. It's crazy, isn't it? What, and again, even watching it back, it's like, wow, that all happened so fast. I will tell you, you know, people had walked away at camp, and Sandra was literally just talking to me, and I tried to kind of find my way in with her, earlier, either the day before or that day, and, you know, felt like there was no room 
to get into the alliance. So I thought, you know, for sure, I'm, I'm one of these, either Jeremy or I are going home. And then out of the blue, she starts kind of talking to me about what would you give for immunity? What would you, I'm like, what are you talking? I'm like, well, I take an eye, like, I wasn't, I wasn't picking up. I don't know if my brain wasn't firing right, <laughs> but finally she laid it out and she said, no, I will give you immunity. I will give you an idol, you know, in exchange for fire token. And right there, I was like, wait a minute, things just got real. Yeah. Like this game is changing right here, but I'll be honest. You know, I've been watching since, you know, Survivor started back in 2000 and so I've seen Sandra play and her MO and the game has always been, you know, as long as it's not me. And so as soon as she offered that, as, as nice and as, as wonderful of a person as Sandra is, I didn't trust her. And she showed me a note, and I didn't even know if it was, I couldn't read that fast. I'm like, she's like, you just need to decide now. And I almost didn't take the deal because the idol she showed me looked fake. I almost didn't, you know, take wow. it. But as soon as I had it, I'm like, you know what, I, I could try this. And, you know, I made the decision to vote her out as soon as she was willing to throw one of her own alliance members under the bus because she basically gave me the option and said, hey, you know, here, you can use this, but you've got to vote out Jeremy and don't tell them. And they said, or, you know, Jeremy or Tony, it doesn't matter, but you can, but nobody can know about this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ooh, this isn't, this isn't just, like, out of the goodness of your heart. Like, there's, there's a motive in this. Mm-hmm. And so right there, it was, yeah, the queen's got to go. Wow, and that was such a power move, too. I I recall screaming at my TV, like throwing my hands up in the air. I think every single person watching was so surprised by that. It was such a boss move. Looking back on that particular moment in time, do you ever think to yourself, man, maybe I should have gone after that Tony guy? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like hindsight. Sure. And that stuff will just eat you up. Like what would have happened? Like how would – and who knows? Like if I would have taken Tony out, you know, instead – And then kept my idol, like, or just kept my idol for later. You know, who knows? But, you know, no matter what, I, Tony, on the one hand, it would have been great. And maybe that would have been the option that I could have stayed in the game and maybe made it to the end. Who knows? But to get to make it to the end with him, as crazy as he is. Yeah. And, you know, he's, again, just a great, you know, I just. He's, he's the perfect epitome of the Survivor brand. I read a description of Tony that described him as a serial killer who, when he betrays yeah. you, you thank him for stabbing you with the knife. <laughs> that's I. That's exactly how I described it to Jeff after the game. I said, yeah. this, this whole game is like being on an island with, with a bunch of Ted Bundys. <laughs> and they're all so charismatic, you know. Wow. Uh, that's so nice good. Volkswagen. What what made you want to play Survivor in the first place? I mean, way back to your first oh. season, what about the game appealed to you? You know, just watching it. We we had watched it, had started watching it, and then we had our daughter, and so I think we might have missed part of maybe one season, but it had just become like our family show to watch every Wednesday, and our daughter would watch it with us. And, you know, I just always thought, you know, stupidly, I thought, gosh, that looks like a lot of fun. You know, like <laughs> like fun was the way that I described Survivor. Yeah. Like, I did not feel that way. (laughs) No. And, you know, I thought the challenges looked fun. And I, you know, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of ego in all of us. That's why we go out there that thinks that we can do the job better than anybody else so that we would strategize better or, and I just thought I wanted to give it a shot. And so I, yeah, I applied two years in a row. Luckily the second year was, you know, the, the one that, that got me in the door and, you know, so glad I did it. Fun is probably never how I will describe Survivor, but <laughs> worth it completely. So so what did it take for, for the producers and for the folks at CBS to convince you to come back for this season, Winners at War? Did it take some convincing? No, that's the sad thing. <laughs> I don't think it takes much convincing for any of us. I think we're just that crazy. The minute I got the call, I was like, yep, okay, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Like, when is it? And when, as soon as you know it's a possibility, and, and luckily my husband has helped me be able to do that by saying, like, you know, he said, you know, why say no until you have something to say no to? Like, just say yes. Just say yes and see what happens. And, you know, I said, yes, I was up for it. And I think within the next month I was out at casting again, and, and here we are, you know, a year later, and another one's in the book. I have one more question for you, Denise. I just sure. want to know what what did you do to train 
for this season? I mean, what, do you just regularly work out all the time and that's why you're so ripped? Or do you, is this something I, that you just do for Survivor? No, I do. This is just how I'm wired. You know, I just like doing things that are physical. You know, I spent this last weekend painting our garage inside. I'm like, I just need to do something. I'm kind of like the Energizer Bunny and I'll go, <laughs> go, 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 go until I just can't go anymore. And so I just do. I just like to run. I, until all this COVID-19 business started happening, I would swim several days a week and go to kickboxing here at, at the, you know, the, the rec center. And so I just have always really enjoyed doing that. So I feel really thankful that that's just a part of my wiring. I know it's hard for so many other people that want to be able to do it, to do that, but just don't have that kind of that internal motivation and drive that that's, just kind of how I'm wired that and a lot of coffee. You know? <laughs> I think I want to hire you yeah. as my personal trainer. So <laughs> let yeah. me know if you ever want to go into business. Is, I don't know that I could train anybody because I'm just like, yeah, that sounds good. Let's go like, let's go walk for 10 miles today. That sounds good. That just sounds entertaining. <laughs> it would be so random. Okay, Denise, I guess my final question for you in the realm of Survivor is what, what are some of the things that, that are allowed to happen off camera on location uh, that, that aren't filmed and that the public would find somewhat interesting. I'm trying to delicately ask you the bathroom question is what I'm trying to <laughs> oh, do. Oh, okay. So that's, I'm like, I'm like, like, what are we talking? Yeah, like those, I mean, those are things that, that it's funny. They have kind of finally just shared a little bit more about that, but yeah, bathroom, like there are no porta potties. There's no teepee. The ocean, the ocean is your bathtub and your toilet all at once. Or yeah. just on the sand. I mean, it's, it's not glamorous, you know, no toothbrushes, Oh, um, what do you do to brush a, your teeth? You know, you swish water, and it's funny. I Maybe we're all just delusional out there, but <laughs> I never thought that anybody's breath smelled bad because you're not eating sugar. Yeah. Okay. You know, all those things that make our breath smell bad any other day, you figure we're just eating rice and coconut and water. And so there's really not a lot to build up there. And then you kind of pick at your teeth with bamboo, and yeah. you kind of brush them and swish and... and it's funny, though. I think we just get used to our own stink yeah. when we're out there. <laughs> That's it. I think we just get used to it because I'm sure we don't smell good. Well, Denise, thank you so much for talking to us about your adventures on Survivor. We loved watching you play, and you are just a really great representation of Iowa. And, and Marion, we're proud to call you uh, one of our hometown folks. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for having me on, and thank you guys for, for being so supportive. Again, Iowa is a great state.